Hello and welcome back to my channel. So if you're interested in learning more about what things actually work and what don't, then you're in the right place. Now, if you're doubtful about whether at-home skin tightening treatments can work, just check this out. This was me in October. So if you're a doubter, I'm proof that these things really can work. So at the moment, I'm taking a little bit of a hiatus from treating my skin, which is really important because you don't want to over-treat because over-treating can be just as bad as not treating at all. So it's really important that you learn to listen to your skin, take breaks when you need to, and then kick back into things when you're ready. In this video, I am going to be busting radio frequency skin tightening treatment myths. These are the things floating around on the internet, put out there by professionals, by manufacturers, by people being sponsored or paid to say things and some misconceptions which i'm totally gonna clear up for you so if you're ready let's do this myth numero uno you won't get results by using at home radio frequency skin tightening devices <laughs> Come on, I'm proof that this is an absolute lie. When you do a search on the internet and you go to a beauty and lifestyle blog or a cosmetic surgeon's page or a clinic's page, one of the first things that you'll notice is that they say you won't get results by using at-home devices. So why would they say that, I hear you ask? Now with that said, of course, there are some really useless devices out there. You would probably get better results just by taking that money and slapping it around your face. But then there are devices that really do work. I mean, at the end of the day, I get that you have your bottom line to think about. Cool, you know, we've all got to work, we've all got to earn money. But by blatantly lying to people and telling them that devices used at home aren't going to give any results, not cool. It's true, you do need to have a certain understanding of the facial structure, the areas to target, intensity and duration. But these are things you can learn over time on your own at home it's not impossible if you've got a pair of eyes a pair of ears the ability to absorb information or follow a tutorial you're good to go I'm not going to completely bash having treatments done in clinic because not everyone has the confidence to treat themselves at home now I've personally had an in-office thermage treatment I had this done around about six and a half seven years ago it cost me the equivalent of a month's wages and if I'm absolutely honest if I were to compare what I look like after thermage in office to what I look like after I've treated myself at home with my device I would say that the results are identical now maybe technology has moved on a little bit since seven years ago so no hate to aestheticians cosmetic surgeons beauty therapists you know you guys are doing a great job you're improving people's appearances giving them confidence which at the end of the day is what anti-aging treatments are all about but if you're one of those people that says at home radio frequency skin tightening devices don't work that's just deceptive myth number two radio frequency skin Skin tightening treatments aren't safe for darker skin tones. Now this is one of those myths that is born off the back of lasers. And while lasers can produce skin tightening effects, their mechanism of action is completely different to radio frequency. The difference with radio frequency is that it doesn't target the melanin chromospores in the skin. Now melanin chromospores are what are responsible for inflammation and hyperpigmentation in the majority of laser based treatments. Now technology has come a long way and there are lasers out there that are much safer and have reduced risks of causing scarring or damage to the skin. The way that radio frequency works is that it doesn't actually heat the upper layers of the skin but the lower dermis, which means that the risk of developing burns or hyperpigmentation on the outer layers of your skin is really, really low. But yeah, at the end of the day, radio frequency can be used on all skin tones and all skin types and ideally is best used from the age of around about 25 to 30 onwards, which is when collagen production starts to slow down. And this can help kickstart everything again, but it's also great for lifting jowls and saggy skin and eyelids and, and all that stuff that it's done to me, really. So is radio frequency safe to use on dark skin tones? Absolutely. Myth number three. Radio frequency skin tightening results are minimal and temporary. The thing to remember here is that any treatment you have done, be it non-invasive, cosmetic, anything, it's going to be temporary. If I went to have a facelift, it's not going to give me a permanent result because nothing in this world is permanent including our skin so with a facelift yes you're gonna get way more dramatic results and that they are gonna last longer because you have surgically removed skin from your face you might also end up looking like you're permanently trapped in a wind tunnel but you'll have tight skin so it's worth it right Botox and fillers they are temporary and you require multiple treatments over the course of a year to hold everything in place but the difference with Botox and fillers and radio frequency is 
that when you use radio frequency, you're causing your body to actually repair itself and create results itself, rather than relying on neurotoxins or fillers to do the work for you. So the faster your body is able to produce collagen and elastin, the faster its ability to heal and repair is. Now when it comes to treating yourself at home with radio frequency, you're going to need to do a few treatments before you start getting the results that you really want. After this, you move on to maintenance treatments. So for me, I'm still in the progress phase. So I use my radio frequency device once a month for an intensive treatment and I give myself a mini boost every fortnight at a much lower intensity. So our radio frequency skin tightening treatments permanent in my opinion yes they are but it takes time to reach that level where you can reduce your maintenance treatment but once you've reached a level of progress that you're happy with it's so easy to keep it there so yeah that's it. Myth number four, radio frequency skin tightening treatments aren't safe. Any kind of treatment you do to yourself comes with some risks. So looking specifically at radio frequency, the first thing that you need to be aware of is that we are exposed to this every single day from Wi-Fi, from TVs, from microwaves, from cell phones, pretty much any electrical device is going to be emitting some form of radio frequency. Now over the years, there have been some pretty detailed studies looking at the effects of radio frequency on the the human body. And yes, it is potentially carcinogenic, which means that there is potential for radio frequency to cause cancer. But when you think about it, the FDA has also made connections with baby powder, power lines, chewing gum, coffee, Pretty much everything we use in our daily lives can have a negative effect on our body. However, there is no conclusive evidence that exposure to high levels of radio frequency increases the cancer risk in people. So in some of the studies, they expose rats to nine hours of radio frequency a day and tumor formation was discovered. Now this study has never been independently replicated and so many other studies have looked deeper and deeper into this and have found zero links between radio frequency and cancer. But one risk that you should be aware of with radio frequency is the potential for burns. As I mentioned earlier, this can happen and if you've got a decent machine, you will know about it when it starts cooking your skin, which is actually where I think it's a benefit to be self-treating because if somebody is treating your skin for you and they burn you, first of all, your brain has to receive that pain signal for you to say ouch and then they have to have that reaction to remove the device from your face whereas when you're treating yourself if something burns you drop it so basically the amount of radio frequency that you receive from a radio frequency skin tightening machine is around about the 450 mark which is pretty much at the lower end of the energy scale so i'm not arrogant enough to say that there's not a possibility that radio frequency could cause issues with your skin literally anything we put into our bodies or onto our bodies has the potential to cause detrimental side effects. In my opinion, radio frequency is safe. Obviously, spend a bit of time researching this yourself and learning more about it. And you know, if you're satisfied in your mind, go ahead with it. If you're not, no one's forcing you. Myth number five, you need to use numbing cream when doing radio frequency at home skin tightening. As I mentioned earlier, radio frequency, it doesn't heat up the outer layers of the skin. Sure, you're gonna get some warming there because you know the radio frequency is gonna be passing through those layers, but the actual heating takes place in the layer where you have most collagen and elastin, which means that you don't really feel very much on the outer layers of your skin at all. Now, if you have a device and you want to know whether it's really radio frequency or not, the easy way to do that is to turn it on, leave it on for 60 seconds, turn it off and put your finger on the tip. If the tip is hot, it's not radio frequency because radio frequency only causes heat once it starts to penetrate through the skin and then bounces back up into the device. And even then the tip from the device wand is not gonna be so hot that you can't touch it. It's going to feel very, very mildly warm. But yeah, when it comes to radio frequency, you should never ever have to use numbing cream on your skin. With microneedling or plasma fibroblasting, sure, go ahead and use it. If you can't feel anything on your skin, then it's all too easy to go too hard, too deep, too fast and end up scarring yourself. Anyway guys, that is it for this video. They are the five most common myths associated with radio frequency skin tightening treatments at home. Hopefully it's answered some of your questions, but if you do have any other questions about radio frequency or the way 
made it it work feel free to drop your question in the comments down below also while you're here if you've made it this far please give this video a like obviously i know that if you're an aesthetician or a cosmetic surgeon i know that you're going to give me a thumbs down so you go ahead and do that it's always cool to know that you guys are tuning in and watching too and finally if you haven't done it yet hit that subscribe button i know i've got the personality of a baked potato but i'm still worth a follow so clicky clicky and yeah that's about it so until next time see ya